I'll begin just by reviewing where we stand in the torture sessions. We're on number three. We're about to begin, begin number three. So we've only really been through two topics, although it probably seemed like a whole day's worth. So now we're going to talk about maps. We did some talk about them, but without looking at one. Now we'll actually look at one, and I'll show where to find some of the things we talked about. After that, we'll actually do an exercise that, has, that is associated with maps. For right now, let's explore a map. What I have is a map of the series for the country of Ghana. This particular one has this name, Koforidua. Is that anywhere near correct? Koforidua. Okay. Uh, and that's the name just of this square or rectangle on the map. And every rectangle in every other direction around it will have some other name. And that's sort of the human readable version that you refer to. If you go to, the, uh, to buy a map, you'll ask for that one. Presumably, there is some named place, an important one, inside of this map that has the same name. Usually, that's how they're named. Now, we, just, we talked about the, the ability to measure in different coordinate systems off of this map, or off of maps in general. This one is no exception. You can see barely at this resolution that there are lines, parallel lines, of some kind of a grid going back and forth across this map. That's one of the systems. And the other system, which we can't see at this level, is a system of degrees that are based on the coordinates at the corners. And I'll show that when we go in a little closer. There are some tick marks that show you parts of degrees. The rest of the content you're probably used to from having seen maps. So what we're going to do is to look at the things that are important for us in terms of georeferencing. For example, can we figure out what datum this map is in? And what scale is it? To do that, I need to do some zooming way in. I'll make it quite big. So what I've done is I've zoomed into the center at the bottom of this map, the part that no one ever reads, to find the most important information of all. So it's telling me, this is a topographic map, and so every one of these lines signifies something to do with elevation, and this tells me how far apart those lines are. They're 50 meters apart. It tells me that the whole map is in a transverse Mercator projection. So we immediately know something about how it's portrayed. Then, the important information for Moses is in blue and in smaller font. The blue numbered lines indicate 10,000 meter Guinea zone grid in a Clark 1880 ellipsoid. So this is a UTM zone that has a name, a Guinea zone. So you have to figure out which one that is. And if you're in a different zone from that one, you need to adjust from it, from this one to the other one. So this is telling us what one of the um, systems is. Below that, it says the last four digits of the grid number are omitted. So it's not even giving you full UTM numbers, it's just giving the kilometer part of it. Actually, it's giving the 10 kilometers. Four digits is 10,000 meters, or 10 kilometers. So, what that means is that these are the numbers in the UTM grid zone. These right here, 17.2. 17.1, 17.3, and those correspond with the grid that we could see when we saw the whole map. These lines right here correspond to that grid. So that is a UTM zone grid right there. And this tells you the parameters of it, what it looks like, how it's constructed. It also gives information below 
about what the difference between true north and magnetic north was at the time, a particular time. That's only important if you're out in the field and you have a compass, you're using a compass. The compass will give you the magnetic north reading. But the map will remain at true north. So there's a relationship between those two norths and you need to know that, that difference. The interesting thing that many people don't know is that the magnetic north changes over time. It actually moves. And this tells you how it moves in this particular location on the Earth. So their point of reference was in 1955. So it says, in 1955, when this information was recorded, this was the situation. But at any time thereafter, you need to calculate where is magnetic north based on the information they give you here. So handheld compasses are complicated. The GPS doesn't use a magnetic north usually. It allows you to, but usually its default setting is to use the true north if you want to, to use it to go in direction. Okay, so we, a lot of our critical information is here. We also have this information called Clark 1880 spheroid. If I look that up on the internet, I will soon find out that that is an ellipsoid. And I've looked over this map and I don't find any datum information. So all they've done on this map is to use the spheroid itself, or in this case, it's actually an ellipsoid. They used the ellipsoid and didn't adjust at all. So, when we do, when we record our information, it will be using an ellipsoid. So now we need to know, if we're going to do any measurements on this map, to find coordinates from the map, we need to know the coordinates of some other place on the map. Well, the UTM coordinates are convenient because they're easy to measure all throughout the map. This little grid in here makes it easy. You take your ruler and you find, you measure, and you figure out your UTM coordinates pretty easily. That's pretty much why UTM coordinates exist. The latitude and longitude is a little different and a little more difficult. Before I move to the edge of the map, this little number right here, that's 45 minutes. That's part of the degrees, minutes, seconds readings for the whole map. But we only find out exactly what that means if we go to a corner. So I'll go to the corner. I'll go to the corner to the left, which is to the west. And I find out that this corner is at 6 degrees north, 1 degree, 30 minutes. And in this case, I don't know where the prime meridian is, I'm embarrassed to say. Does anyone know? Is it east or west of Accra? The prime meridian, zero longitude. It's in Accra? Yes. Okay. I can actually determine that information from here because I have one degree 30 minutes west on the corner and 15 minutes, it must be that that is west, otherwise this would be bigger, right? So that way is west and zero is that way. If I go to the other corner of the map, we should see a number that's smaller than 130, unless we've already crossed zero. Let's take a tour to the east. There's one degree west. And look at that. The prime meridian is sitting right here on the east side of my map. So I'm going from zero to one degree 30 minutes west along longitude. And I'm starting at six degrees north. Let me go to that edge of the map just to find our limits. To seven degrees north. So my map is one degree in latitude, one and a half degrees in longitude. And it's marked 
on the map by the tick marks. That corner right here is zero. That little line right here is 15 minutes west. And in the meantime, I have my UTM zone markings here. The other thing to note is that my UTM numbers are getting bigger as we go that way. That's because UTMs always have an easting. They get bigger from some point toward the east. And that's reflected here, 17.8, 17.9, 18. Bigger towards the east. They're also getting bigger towards the north. So UTM cords are eastings and northings. 4.9, 5.0, getting bigger going north. Okay, those are our, our coordinate systems on the map. <coughs> That's the basic anatomy. Now, if I want to measure and try to get a coordinate from the map, what will I do? I'll, if I'm going to do it in decimal degrees, I need to measure between this point and this one in millimeters say, and that will tell me how many millimeters there are in 15 minutes in the east-west direction. And I'll do the same going this way between 7 degrees and the next tick mark to the south, which is 45 minutes. So I'll measure from there to the corner, get a number of millimeters, and that will tell me how many millimeters there are in 15 minutes in the north-south direction. And you say, John, why aren't they the same? And I say, people, because it's a Mercator projection. It's not an equal distance projection. So they don't preserve distances in both directions. They are different. You need to measure them in both directions to, be, to get it correct. That's why in some slide earlier on I said it's better for you, easier in fact, if you can get a map that is an equal distance projection where one kilometer in this direction is the same distance on the map as one kilometer in that dis direction on the map. Here we don't have that luxury. They're not very different. Not very different at all, in fact. You might not even be able to notice because we're so near to the equator. But as you get further and further north, that becomes more and more of a problem with a Mercator projection map. And the further north you go, the less likely that you'll find a Mercator projection map for that very reason. <coughs> 